new crew of Freedom Mind's Cassandra. Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a really quick in the kitchen thing for me. I need to get some make ahead lunches and breakfasts for my kids. We are fresh out. I still have some French toast sticks in the freezer that we prepped in the last video like this that I can link down below for you guys, but we're out of like everything else. So my plan today is to make some mini chocolate chip muffin bites for the kids. Get a bunch of those back in the freezer and then make some bagel pizzas that I can put in the kids lunches or for my kids who are here during the day just to pop in the oven and have them for when I want them. So that's the plan for today. Two things. I have other things that I really had on the docket for today but behind the scenes in my real life my furnace went out. It's currently out. Thankfully, it's not that cold. It's like 50 degrees, so no harm, no foul. Um, but I'm waiting for the furnace people to get here, and once they're here, I don't want to be filming because that's just really weird for me. So it's probably going to be really loud because they're going to have to rip it out and put a new furnace in. So yeah, we're just going to stick to what really needs to get done, which is the mini muffins and then the pizzas. I got to get those done. I'm hoping to get them done because my bagels are about, they've been in the pantry for a while and I don't want them to go bad on me. So that's the plan for today. Let's start with the mini muffins. If you've never made mini muffins with me before, this is what I like to use. It's just a mini muffin tin. I'm gonna give these a good spray with some of my Pam here. I like to spray it with Pam right away because otherwise I tend to forget. So I'll spray it before I even start and kind of just set it aside. I use for my mini muffins are this big 10 pound bag of pancake mix that I get from Sam's Club. Super cheap, it's like five or six dollars and it lasts my family a good amount of time. So I use this and miniature chocolate chips. That's literally it and then water from the top. I like to mix them in my little pouring measuring cup here. Just so that I can it makes it easier to pour right into the mini muffin tins. I'm doing chocolate chip today. That's what my kids like the most. But you could do like holiday sprinkles if you want. You could put a dash of maple syrup in the middle. You could put bacon in here, like cooked bacon, cooked sausage. Um, you could do blueberries, bananas, nuts, kind of whatever you want. But my kids really like the chocolate chip ones, so that's usually what I just tend to stick to unless they ask for something specific. Usually I do this on Sundays, but we had a jam packed weekend. It was the kids, I say the kids, but my older girl's birthdays are just a couple days apart. So we do a group birthday party. And then this year we had decided to group it with some of their cousins. So we rented a bounce house. We just had like a fall festival birthday party essentially. And Sunday, which was yesterday, was the last day of trout season for the year, at least for streams. So we went and did that. And we got a couple trout in the fridge right now that I also have to brine at some point today. I should probably do that too right away. But I need to brine the fish so that when my husband gets home tonight, he can put it in the smoker. My muffin tin's here. And I just like to pour it in. I like to keep my pancake batter plain. That way, uh, I can switch it up if I decide to. I can do like two rows of chocolate chips. I can do a row of banana, row of blueberry. So. That's why I like to do that. And then you can also dictate how many chocolate chips go into each individual muffin. Um, that way you're not getting some muffins that have like a ton of chocolate chips and some muffins that have absolutely no chocolate chips because just naturally the chocolate chips are gonna probably stick to the bottom of your bowl here. Here are my miniature chocolate chips and I just kind of start dropping them in here. I bake these at 350 until they're done. It usually takes only like, I don't know, five minutes or so. And then I will let these cool. I put them in a freezer Ziploc bag and then I will freeze these 
and then as the kids want them for breakfast or sometimes they want them in their lunch boxes I will if I'm putting them in their lunch box I'll actually just put them in their frozen because they naturally thaw throughout the day but if they want them for breakfast I just pop them in the microwave for a couple minutes until they're warm and then they're like a fresh muffin out of the oven the kids love them this is what they eat probably four days out of the week okay so while our first batch of muffins are in the oven i'm just going to set the rest of this aside i'm going to pull out my big tray here and this with parchment paper just because I am gonna sprinkle cheese on these pizzas and I don't like it when the cheese burns to the pan. That just takes forever to scrub off. So I'm gonna put parchment down. I'm using mini bagels today. I typically make all my own pizza crust. My pizza crust recipe is written out in the description box for you. One day I might just make all of my pizza, like some mini pizza crusts and do this with homemade crust but for right now this is where I'm at I'm just going to cheat and make my own little bagel bites you could even do these with homemade bagels whatever this would be a great way to use up bagels that are like stale because we're gonna bake these anyways these bagels um, I bought these at the beginning of the month for once month grocery shopping so 15 days ago they're pretty stiff um, these would be fine if like you were gonna put them in a toaster or something but these definitely aren't something that you would want to just eat. They're, they're not the most fresh bagel in the world. So this is gonna be a great way to use them up. But we're just gonna open all these bagels up. So this is our homemade pasta sauce. Really simple. I'm just gonna take a spoonful Spread that over my bagels. You can do this with English muffins too. You can do this with non bread. I'm choosing to do the bagels because that's really simply what I have. How is there a hornet in here? Shoo! My gosh. Chicken water is frozen in the morning, but we've still got hornets flying around. How is that even a thing? Hi guys, I was rambling about a whole lot of nothing, so I ended up taking the audio out of this clip that's just real life for you. So all I'm talking about here is that I was going to do two batches of bagels, one just cheese and one possibly with just um, cheese and pepperoni, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. But I was also talking about how you can do different things on here as well, use up whatever you got in the fridge. I think I'll do this full batch, just cheese, and the next batch of bagels that I do, um, I'll do pepperoni so that way I can have variety. I'm gonna put these in the oven too just for a couple minutes. Let me see, dude. Okay, so you have one left. Whoa, oh my goodness. So my chocolate chip muffins, okay. not quite done yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep the next round of bagels. I'm not gonna be able to fit them all on the sheet because it's a significantly smaller sheet but that way I can just keep rotating and make the most of my short amount of time in the kitchen today. Never mind, we might actually be able to fit these all on here because we've been eating out of this bag. Okay, so prime example here, I didn't get to these bagels in time. They have some mold on them. So I'm obviously not gonna use these for the bagels or for bagel pizzas. What I'm going to do is give these to my chickens they will still eat these they will still enjoy them so i'm gonna get a scrap bucket well you know what actually i'm just gonna put them right back in the bag here these are gonna go to the chickens so i guess today it's just gonna be a shorter day in the kitchen than i had i had originally anticipated but that is a okay so what i'm going to do so this is my quart sized jar we used almost the entire thing which is why last year was my first year canning pizza sauce and pasta sauces and I canned them in all different sizes. I did quarts, I did pints, I did half pints. I liked that for a couple reasons. Sometimes it's nice if you're making just one pizza. I didn't always want a whole quart of sauce. Um, and I liked the half pints because a lot of the times we do grilled cheese or like hot ham and cheeses 
or strombolis or calzones and we just need a little bit of sauce for dipping i really liked having my half quarts or my pints for that but what i've realized over a whole year of using the sauce and cooking with it is i actually don't mind having a whole quart in here because we typically will use some sort of sauce like this about once a week so even here i didn't use it all um i still have like what a cup and a half of sauce in here i bet in the next week if i just put this in the fridge which is what i'm going to do i'm just going to put the cap back on it and put it in the fridge kind of like you would a jar that you get from the store if you didn't use it all i'll put this in the refrigerator i'm going to put it where i'm going to see it and maybe this week for lunch colt myself and cleo will have a grilled cheese sandwich and we'll use this for dipping instead of tomato soup um maybe i'll make some calzones or something this friday instead of doing pizzas and we'll make sure that we use this up within the next couple of days so this year i canned all of my pasta sauces in quarts instead of different variety of sizes and so far i'm not regretting it so i'm really enjoying that it was less work for me um making sure that i didn't have different varieties of sizes on the shelf so it was just less of like a mental thing that i had to keep aware of through canning season which was nice so i'm just gonna put this in the fridge and we'll use it over the next couple of days so what i'm gonna move on to now because my muffins are still cooking are the trout these are the two trout that we got yesterday we actually got a third but we ended up giving one away to um, a guy that was kind of fishing next to us so we gave him a fish but um these are the two i think we have a brown trout and a brook, brook trout in here we're going to um marinate them the exact same way in the same pot or in the same pan you're going to want something glass something like not metal not metallic anything like that so i tend to use of course, I don't have any right now. Where are all my pans? Oh. Oh. We're gonna use my glass bowl because I don't know where any of my lasagna pans are. That's typically what I would use because they lay flat. You can fit the whole fish in it and they're easy to pull in and out of the fridge. The fish sits in the brine really nicely. I don't know where either of my was. Oh, there's one right there. They're probably still dirty from the party that we had two days ago. That's okay but I'm gonna wash these fish off. We're gonna rinse all the slime off. That's really important so that the brine gets into the meat of the fish. This is the reality of, of my kitchen right now. But after we're done with this, I'll get my dishes switched over. But I just have some medium Colton. I just have some medium temp temperatured water here and you just have to rinse the slime off of these trout and they're really slippery so okay. I'm just gonna rinse it off here and you will be able to feel the difference in the fish once you get enough of the slime off and we're gonna have to rinse um, the slime off of it a second time after it comes out of the brine so you'll be able to feel the fish go from like this really mucusy kind of texture to actually kind of sticky once you start to wash the slime off but look at absolutely how stunning this trout is isn't it gorgeous just beautiful so i'm gonna get this in my bowl it's a brook trout so two different varieties here they came out of the same spot but you can see this just gorgeous all the spots on it and the purple coloring on it so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually just gonna utilize this pan that I had already prepped. Normally I would pull out my cooling racks, but no point in pulling those out if I've got this here. And I just kind of pull them out. My kids usually eat like four or five muffins for breakfast. And then they pair it with like yogurt, a piece of fruit, um, applesauce, something like that. So they're not just eating these muffins. And then like I said, we'll put them in lunch boxes from time to time if that's what they ask for so for reference here we had about four cups of pancake batter and we're getting just shy of two pans and this will last my kids about a week or so um 
I might go back and kind of do another four cups of pancake mix and kind of double what I have here. I want to get ahead on these just so I don't have to worry about them like every week. Okay, you guys, our trout, very simple. Salt, honey, brown sugar, water. Unbelievably simple. We use the meat eater recipe for our brines. I will link his YouTube video down below on this if I can find it. If I can't find it, then I will just link or I'll just write out the recipe down below. I just eyeball this now, but we're gonna use some salt here. There is our brown sugar. And then we have an electric smoker that we use with a variety of different wood chips. The very last thing you need is just some water. And I'm just gonna put in enough water so that the fish are sitting and are completely submerged in the water. That is good. I'm gonna rewash my hands and then I'm gonna put a plate on top of here just to keep this kind of contained. And then we're gonna slide this in the, into the refrigerator and we're gonna let this brine. What time is it now? It is 10.20. I'll let this brine until my husband gets home probably around five o'clock. He will string, well, we'll rinse them off string them up, put them in the smoker, and we'll let these smoke probably for three or four hours until we go to bed. And then we'll have beautiful smoked trout kind of to enjoy throughout the week. Or we will put the smoked trout in the freezer. We do it that way too, and then pull them out as we want. We love to make this trout dip that we like to eat on crackers with cream cheese. It's phenomenal. It's probably our favorite way to use the smoked trout. Otherwise, we like to bake it in the oven with a piece of bacon in the middle and it just creates this like smoky, delicious baked fish. It is fantastic. We love to eat that with mashed potatoes and gravy, some sort of like roasted vegetable. It is phenomenal, it's our favorite. So I'm gonna wash my hands and get this. So I like to take a plate and we will just put it kind of in here like a weight. Oh, great. And this just keeps the fish submerged. That way it's not kind of popping up and floating. And it also kind of helps to prevent spills in the refrigerator. So lots of good things that happen with the plate on top. While our oven is still cooking, I'm gonna take all of our ingredients here that we've been pulling out, get everything put away, hopefully get my dishwasher unloaded and my dirty dishes out of my sink and into the dishwasher. So let's go ahead and do those things while we just kind of wait for our stuff to bake. Once they're cooled down enough, I'm gonna take that whole tray just like that. I'm gonna set it down in my chest freezer. I'm gonna flash freeze them. Flash freezing is just so that when I, well, first off, they're frozen flat. They're gonna be frozen just like how they are on the thing there. They're not all gonna stick together. They're not gonna get all bunched up and I'm not gonna have to sit there smashing the bag of little pizza bites, pizza muffins onto my counter to break them apart to put them in lunch boxes. So we're gonna let those cool. I'll put them in my chest freezer. Once they've been in my chest freezer, probably about 20, 30 minutes or so, just so that the surface of them is frozen, I'll take them and then I will stack them in a freezer Ziploc bag. I don't do those with these muffins. They don't clump up on me in the freezer. I don't know what it is. I've never had an issue with them ever. Um, a couple weeks ago when we did this before school starting with the homemade crustables, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I was talking about, oh, I should have flash froze those because they're all gonna stick together. They did not stick together. I didn't have an issue with it either. So I don't know, but I'm going to flash freeze them because that's what I wanna do. If you don't wanna do and you wanna be a risk taker, you could A, save your bagel bag, which is what I did, and put them in your bagel bag, tie it up with your tie and put it in the freezer, which is what I'm going to So I got my pizza bites loaded here. It's really as easy as that, just put them in your bagel bag or whatever, your English muffin bag. I'm gonna put it just like this in my freezer and we'll be able to pull these out as needed. Really easy snacks like after school snack maybe you can heat some of these up good for lunch boxes good for just easy convenient sunday afternoon lunch you don't want to cook so these are really nice i'm really hoping that i can do a little bit better and have these like 
on hand all the time. That way you're just not wanting to buy like those convenience meals from the frozen section. So hopefully, if I'm really on it, maybe like through November and December, I really wanna get ahead on these because I have a trip coming up, my husband has a trip coming up, and then the kids have obviously two breaks, fall break and then Christmas break. I'd really like to have some of these on hand just to help make those breaks and those trips a little bit easier on everybody. So hopefully I can get like a ton of these in the freezer, but this is a really good start for right now. So these are gonna go in the freezer. I have to run down to the basement and grab another pack of my Ziploc bags and then I'll get these in the freezer and then I'm completely done for it. Thank you so much for hanging out in my homestead kitchen with me today, getting some easy make ahead breakfast and lunch going. I also on the docket really wanna get some quiche in the freezer. I'd like to put like two or three quiche in the freezer. I really wanna make some breakfast bakes. You guys tell me all the time that I need to make some breakfast bakes with all of our surplus of eggs. So I wanna do that, especially because my chickens are molting so bad right now. Some of my chickens have almost no feathers and they're not laying. So I wanna take some of the surplus eggs that I have in my fridge right now, get some breakfast bakes and some quiche and things in the freezers. That way I can pull out easy breakfasts um, or just easy things, kind of using up those eggs that we have surplus now to kind of use to get us through when the chickens aren't laying as much here. And then upcoming weeks as the time changes and we get less sun, the chickens will lay less. So that's gonna have to be another day all in itself. I wanna get some more crustables in the freezer and I kinda wanna make some corn dogs as well and get those in the freezer for the kids. So lots of ideas happening up here. But we're just gonna have to push it off for another day. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. I appreciate you guys being here and we will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.